Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Peter Salerno, doctor of psychology, retired licensed psychotherapist, and personality disorder specialist. I have extensive clinical experience working with individuals diagnosed with personality disorders. And during my years in practice, I also received formal training in the administration and scoring of the Hair Psychopathy Checklist Revised, the international gold standard for the clinical and forensic assessment of psychopathy. You may have also seen me in the Hulu series, Ted Bundy, Dialogue with the Devil, where I joined a panel of experts to examine Bundy's behavior through a clinical lens. I do want to offer a disclaimer for this video. This video discusses serial killers, sexual sadism, and common psychological myths. One myth that I will be discussing is the idea that people who become serial killers become serial killers because they were abused in childhood or that they have suffered childhood trauma. My goal is not to minimize the impact of childhood trauma. It's very real and very devastating for many. But this video challenges the claim that abuse explains why serial killers kill. We are going to look at what science, not speculation, actually tells us. So I'm going to take aim at a long-standing myth that serial killers commit heinous acts because they were abused, especially sexually or physically in childhood, that they are simply reenacting their own trauma. It's an idea you've probably heard in documentaries, news specials, true crime podcasts, and from forensic experts in the field of psychology, as well as criminal profilers. But it's wrong. And this myth is dangerous. Let's start with a simple truth. Abuse does not cause abuse. While it's true that some people who have been harmed go on to harm others, the majority do not. Studies show that most individuals who experience sexual or physical abuse in childhood do not become abusers, violent offenders, or sadistic predators. Yet we often hear, they were abused, so that explains it. That's a classic example of illusory correlation, a cognitive bias where we assume two things are linked because they co-occur, even if there's no causal relationship. Just because some serial killers had troubled childhoods doesn't mean that trauma caused their sadism. Without controlling for genetics, brain structure, and temperament, these theories remain anecdotal and outdated. Modern research tells us a very different story. Most sexual sadists and serial killers show signs of early emerging abnormalities that have nothing to do with trauma. We now know that callous unemotional traits, a core component of psychopathy, are highly heritable and observable in early childhood. Brain imaging studies show reduced activation in areas involved in empathy, emotion processing, and aversion to others' pain. These abnormalities are biologically present from the start, not acquired from trauma. Research has found that individuals with psychopathy show impaired responsiveness to others' distress, a neurological deficit, not a learned behavior. And Robert Plowman, summarizing decades of behavioral genetics research emphasized that genetic influence on personality traits like aggression, impulsivity, and lack of empathy is substantial, often exceeding 50%. So let's examine some infamous serial killers often misrepresented by trauma narratives. Ted Bundy. No evidence of physical or sexual abuse. His later claim that pornography made him a killer was self-serving and widely discredited. And his sadism and lack of empathy were evident from a very young age. Jeffrey Dahmer. Dahmer was not physically or sexually abused. While he was exposed to a lot of parental conflict and neglect, he describes his sadistic urges as beginning early in childhood, even before age four long before any external influence could be blamed. Richard Cottingham, the torso killer, no known history of abuse, reports growing up in a stable home and was always sadistic by temperament, not a trauma survivor acting out. Dennis Rader, BTK, grew up in a two-parent home with no documented trauma, reports being nurtured and loved, 
throughout his childhood, displayed early signs of cruelty to animals and devious sexual fantasies, hallmarks of callous unemotional traits, not trauma reenactment. In all four cases, the idea that abuse or neglect caused their sadism simply doesn't hold up. And yet public narratives still lean heavily on these outdated psychoanalytic explanations. So why does this myth persist? Mainly because most people are uncomfortable with the alternative, that some people are born different, with hardwired deficits in empathy, abnormal reward processing, and pleasure derived from others' suffering. But clinging to trauma-based models obscures the truth and impairs possible prevention. It also stigmatizes trauma survivors, most of whom are not violent. It misleads juries, therapists, and the general public. And it prevents us from investing in early identification and genetic research that could actually save lives. Serial killers are not made by their pasts. They are shaped by a complex interaction of genes, brain abnormalities, and neurodevelopmental patterns, not simple cause and effect trauma. Here's the final truth. There is no type when it comes to sadistic killers. Some are socially skilled, others are loners. Some come from hardship, others from affluence. Some were abused, many were not. The only consistent finding is that they tend to show early, stable, biologically rooted traits. Lack of empathy, arousal from dominance, low physiological reactivity to distress, and in some cases, neurological anomalies visible on imaging scans. The idea that hurt people hurt people may be comforting, but it's not science. In this domain, biology is destiny far more often than trauma. If we want to prevent future violence, we need to move beyond folklore and focus on what the science actually tells us. Let's stop treating trauma like a catch-all explanation for evil. Let's invest in scientific research and early risk detection. Because serial killing isn't a story of broken hearts. It's a story of broken wiring. Thank you for watching. If you would like more information on the genetic influence and etiology of personality disorders, check out my book, The Nature and Nurture of Narcissism. And don't forget to watch Ted Bundy, Dialogue with the Devil, streaming on Hulu and Disney+. Until next time, I'm Dr. Peter Salerno, and keep thinking critically.